Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I'm going to be profiling for you my Lunar Light deck. Uh, this is a deck that recently came out in Shining Victories. I do believe it's going to get some more support, I know, in the future, because I know it's an anime-based deck. Uh, Serena plays it, I think, on um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc, Arc V, Arc 5, and um, I believe it's getting another rank 4, which is going to be really helpful. I think that's coming out in Dark Illusions, but it's going to really help the deck maybe be a more rank 4 type of deck as well as using polymerization so you can use things like Colt Soldier Wolf Bark maybe uh, Bear and Gorilla more effectively and Tiger King so um, only time will tell um, the deck is very good it's a Beast Warrior deck so it can use Tanky so it has its own searcher the deck is very powerful if you can get into its other polymerizations like Panther and also your big one Lunar Light Leo Dancer so if you can get those to those big boys this deck can be very powerful so without further ado let's get into the deck profile i'm still learning the deck um so i don't know all the card effects off the top of my head so i do apologize about that guys um first off i run three lunar light blue cat i don't know why but i always say dancer at the end i know it doesn't say lunar light uh lunar light blue cat dancer but i've always just called them i always put dancer on the end so i do apologize if i do that to any other cards um Blue, three Lunar Light Blue Cat. Card's very good. Uh, very efficiently, you can special summon it. Um, does come in handy for going into your different polymerization cards. My favorite Lunar Light monster is three Lunar Light Black Sheep. Um, you pretty much run three of just about every single Lunar Light. Uh, I know people have debated about cutting Wolf down, or if you can cut down to one or two, you can cut down Purple Butterfly down as well. It's something I've debated about, but I'm still muscle manus about it. I pretty much will wait till the new support comes out and then maybe cut the ratios down of those cards to make room for other Lunar Light monsters. But Black Sheep is an amazing card in this deck. I'm going to read you its effect because it's pretty kick ass. So, Lunar Light Black Sheep states Add one Lunar Light monster from your graveyard to your hand except Lunar Light Black Sheep. Its other effect, so you can discard this to get the effect off, by the way. Add one polymerization from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as a fusion material for a fusion summon, you can add to your hand one face-up Lunar Light Pendulum monster from your extra deck, or one Lunar Light monster from your graveyard except Lunar Light Black Sheep. So it helps recur cards or monsters from your graveyard that you've polyed into. Add them back to your hand so you can go off for more polymerizations. I personally really like this card, and I like it as a three of in the deck. For, it's a staple, I think, at the moment. Um, very, very good card overall. Next, we run three White Rabbit. I know it says Lunar Light White Rabbit, but I always call it White Rabbit or the Playboy Bunny. I don't know why. Every time I see this card, I think of Playboy. I, I don't know why. Maybe that's my dirty mind, but whatever. Um, so White Rabbit's actually a pretty dang good card as well. I'm going to read you its effect here. When this card is normal summon, you can target one Lunar Light monster in your graveyard except Lunar Light White Rabbit. Special summon it in defense position. Once per turn, you can target one with spell trap card and your opponent controls up to the number of Lunar Light cards you control. Return them to the hand. It really, really comes in handy. It's actually a pretty dope card, pretty good card, I have to say. Um... It's kind of like a mini wolf bark type of card with its other effect that can blow away back row depending upon how many Lunar Light monsters you have on the field. But, you know, sometimes that's not the good thing because your opponent will effect failure it, they'll Solemn Strike, you know, things of that nature once they learn the deck. But the thing is, a lot of people don't understand the deck, how it functions. So when you, they see this on the field, they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. So they let the effect go through sometimes. It just depends. But definitely I like it as a three of very, very good card white rabbit is next we run three lunar light purple butterfly uh, this is a card I've seen different ratios of I've seen people run it as a three of I've seen people run it as a two of I've seen people run it as a you know one of it, it completely depends uh, me I'm considering maybe bumping this down to two of but I always use one of them at least for allure of darkness so if I draw two of them I always seem to allure the other one away because allure is at two now but it really doesn't matter. I wanted to have enough darks in the target where I wasn't banishing Lunar Light monsters that I really cared about to go into fusions. I could just banish some of them freely um, with the Lure of Darkness to get some more draw power in the deck. So I do like it. It's actually a pretty good card. It's kind of, I don't know how to describe the card exactly. It's kind of like a mini Honest. 
Uh, it's not honest or collude or uh, cra bougie and crane really, but it's kind of that aspect where it can help you run over things that are more powerful, which is kind of helpful in the deck. And it also can be used for lunar light fodder for polymerization type of cards and whatnot. Um, so when you're polying into other cards, then like Purple Dancer is one of the cards I just use randomly. So yeah, I like it as a three of at the moment. I may cut it down in the future. Next, we run your Pendulum Monsters, which is three Lunar Light Tiger. And your three Lunar, your two Lunar Light Wolf. Uh, Wolf, I like it in the deck, but it sometimes gets a little bit cloggy. And it's a light attribute. It's not a dark attribute. So that means I can't allure darkness it away. Um, I was running three originally when I first tested the deck out, and I found that, oh, it's a light attribute. I can't allure it away. So unless it's in the pen pendulum zone while I'm pendulum summoning it, it's not that very effective. In the pendulum zone, he's pretty much like a miracle fusion, and he's very effective in the deck. I would definitely run him as a two of. Three of a find is a little bit too much, but that's just me from playtesting. Uh, Lunar Light Tiger over here is a very good card. Its pendulum effect is once per turn you can target one Lunar Light monster to your graveyard. Special summon it, but it can't attack. Its effects are negated, also destroyed during the end phase. If this card, its monster effect is, if this card is on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one Lunar Light monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. You can use the effect of Lunar Light Tiger once per turn. Pretty much what Tiger is, if you want to understand, is it helps bring cards onto the field so you can polymerization using poly you can use polymerization to go into your Luna Light extra deck monsters that's what Tiger really helps out with and I really like it as a three of the wolf is really helpful but I only like it as a two of that's just personally me and it's easily searchable you can easily search these pendulum scales out um, from the deck with the trap card I believe it is off the top of my head but yeah very effective. Next we run three Fire Formation Tanky. Uh, a staple in this deck. They're all Beast Warriors, um, which is really helpful. The only one that cannot be searched out is Wolf. One of his downsides is he can't be searched out because he's a rank, he's a level five, well, excuse me, not five, six, I think. But um, I miscounted. I can't count this morning. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Give me a break. Um, haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> But all the other, every, pretty much everything else in the deck can be searched by Fire Formation Tanky. It's definitely a staple as a three of in the deck. You could try out Tensu. It's something I've been trying out, but I like the Tanky instead. Uh, next up, I run three Polymerization. I feel that Polymerization is definitely a staple in this deck as a three of, because it's a fusion type of deck. You really need the Poly, and you can easily recover it with Fusion Recovery. But three Polymerization, definitely a staple in my opinion. Next, I run three fusion recovery. Uh, I personally feel that this card's pretty staple in the deck at the moment. Um, I have been also try, trying out fusion recovery in um, my Fright Fur deck, but uh, I haven't updated it yet. But definitely a uh, three fusion recovery. It's a really old, it's an old school card that's actually gone up in price. Um, I found these in my common box, but when I was looking, I couldn't find them. I looked up online and they were going for like, I think four to five dollars a piece was really stupid I thought but yeah just letting you know that guys if you're trying to buy fusion recoveries they've gone up in price a lot um, luckily I find these in my common box from ages ago but uh, three fusion recovery really helpful card in the deck um, helps you recover advantage gain more advantage from cards in your graveyard so you can use polymerization again and go into more fusions uh, that, next we run two fusion tag. I was thinking about running three fusion tag because it helps you get your other Lunar Light monsters out so you can go into your bigger Lunar Light monsters like Leo Dancer and whatnot, which is kind of helpful. Um, but I, I, I've, I'm debating about running three of it. I'm thinking about cutting, cutting out a purple butterfly for a third one, but I'm still debating it because sometimes it can be a dead card and other times it, it, it's not a dead card. So... Eh, I mean, I like it as a two of at the moment. I may bump it up to three in time, but I haven't made that decision quite yet. But I definitely like Fusion Tag as a two of in the deck. It really comes in handy. Next, I run two Twin Twister. Um, you can send things to your graveyard, like I said, with right, you know, with Leo Dan, Tiger, and Rabbit, and everything else. You can reborn things from the graveyard fairly easily. We'll bring them back and then go for polymerization. So. 
this deck, you know, it's going to make a big monster, but you it, it, you invest so much into that big monster, you want to make sure it doesn't die by traps, at least. So you can Twin Twister your stuff away uh, before you go off and on your plays and your combo plays. So I do like the Twin Twisters in the deck. It does, definitely comes in handy. Uh, next, we run two Allure of Darkness. Um, I definitely a staple in the deck. Originally, I was running, instead of, I think, three Fusion Recoveries, and three polymerizations originally. I was running Regeki and Upstart Goblin and Soul Charge in the deck. Just some other cards I have been testing out. But at the end of the day, I decided to go with speed and consistency in this deck because it really needs it. <laughs> so I decided to run um, and some traps for back row because the deck really needed needed it as well. So I decided to run Tuler Darkness for speed because that was better over Upstart and the Fusion Recoveries over Regeki and Soul Charge because they were more helpful at the end of the day. I found. So, yep, two um, Allure of Darkness is definitely a staple in the deck. Pretty much all, most of your main deck is dark based. Next, we run three Lunar Light Recreation Dancer. Not Recreation, um, Reincarnation Dancer, I think. Uh, I run three of these cards, but let me read this card for you quickly. If a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, add up to two Lunar Light monsters from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Lunar Light. Reincarnate, reincarnation dancer per turn. I can't pronounce the word. I can't spell. Too early in the morning, guys. Uh, I like this card a lot. It's very, very good. Uh, it can help you search out for your pendulum scales, which I believe are lunar light monsters. They're not something else. Uh, lunar light, yeah, they're both lunar light monsters. Uh, so it really comes in handy. Oh, wait, lunar night. Lunar night? No, lunar light. <laughs> lunar light. Whew, I'm getting tired. Um, seeing double. But yeah, it's really good. I like it as a three of. You could cut it down if you want to make room for Regeki. But even though this is a trap, it's a very important card in the deck at the moment. Ashley has some pretty dang good artwork, by the way. But beside the point, it's very useful in the deck. Next we run, for one of traps, I won one Quaking Mirror Force and one Bottleless Trap Hole. Uh, I was considering bumping Quaking Mirror Force up to two of. I just couldn't find the room in the deck. So I decided to run one of that. You could take it out for Regeki if you want to go that route, but it's up to you. Um, I, like, I do like it in the deck. It's really useful. And then one Bottomless Trap Hole because it's a really helpful card. Uh, for my other monsters, I run the Solemn Brigade for 2016. One Solemn Warning and two Solemn Strikes. Uh, Solemn Warning, it's a staple really. Solemn Strikes comes in handy. It helps you when you get your Lunar Light monster out on the field. It stops them from being just run over by bigger monsters, perhaps, or just stopping effects that monsters that can inhibit your combo plays to go into bigger Lunar Light monsters and just your fusion monsters overall, because you invest a lot into those monsters. So you want protection for them. So I definitely like the Solemn Brigade, self explanatory to some extent, but it is very important in the deck. Your two Solemn Strikes and your warning. On to the extra deck, guys. Um, still working on most of the extra deck. Uh, mainly, I just go into the fusions. I really don't go into the exceed monsters, but there are times I do do that. Uh, so, first off, I run three Lunar Light Cat Dancer. Uh, this is your main one you will go into, Cat Dancer. Very good card. I uh, wish I had a little bit more attack, but it's still a good card. Apologize for the ambulance. The, the, the Popo is coming after me. Um, three <laughs> Lunar Light Cat Dancer, very effective in the deck. Police car was going by my house. <laughs> Next, I run two Lunar Light Panther Dancer. Uh, I like this fusion a lot, it just looks really attractive, um, but whatever. Uh, two Lunar Light uh, Panther Dancer. You could run three of it, uh, but I like just two of it at the moment. You only really need two. And then finally, two Lunar Light Leo Dancer. You really only need two. I've seen people run three of it. Um, I've only been the. I would say I've usually just gone through one or two of them per duel, but there have been times when I've been able to make three of it, but I just end the game right there. So it just depends, but I do like the option of running two of them in the deck. Lunar Light Leo Dancer. Next, I run one Castell. One Dark Rebellion, XYZ Dragon, and one Cowboy. I decided to run Gaga Ga Cowboy in the deck because it does end games in this deck. You may inflict a lot of damage, but your opponent's not quite dead yet. 
you go for cowboy game um, it does happen and dark and xyz this deck is somewhat ftk centric so i do like this because this can help put more pressure on your opponent if you're able to go into it you only have three tar you know three things for rank fours you know you don't have that many targets for it so when you do go into them i mean gotta be careful <laughs> you don't often you don't often go, go into them often enough right at the moment um, next up for your rank fours i do want one downward magician i like the one downward it does come in handy and then i run some rank threes i run one leviathan the sea dragon uh, Levy of the Sea Dragon, because you do run Allure of Darkness so you can grab back your banished monsters and then go for more combo plays. It does happen. Um, next, I won one Super Quantum Mega Beast Grand Pulse. I do like this card. Destroys back row and has a big booty. And I also won one the Phantom Knight of the Break Swords. This card is very effective in the deck and really helpful overall. And at the same time, you can overlay them with Down a Magician after you used, you used their effect for having a bigger beat stick that can run over things, which is helpful in the deck at the end of the day. And lastly, I won one Sky Cavalry and Centurion. It does come in handy in the deck. I know it's not the most efficient card in the deck and the card I don't probably go into the least, but I have gone into it and it does come in handy and it's actually not a bad card really. Um, but that is the main deck guys and that's the extra deck for you. So I hope all of you enjoyed this deck profile. Um, like I said, I'm still learning the deck. Um, still testing it out, but this is the build I've been testing out for about, and at locals, I tested it out at locals last night, uh, first time really taking the deck into combat, and I did test it out online last week, so I've been working on this deck for about two weeks, but I'm still learning it, it's a fun deck, and it's a very cool deck to play, but tell me what you think about Lunar Lights, and um, I hope all of you enjoy, guys enjoy this deck profile, until next time, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling, and I'll see you guys next time. Good luck dueling to all of you guys.